thanks so much for joining me on this beautiful Wednesday. Um, tonight we're going to talk about, um, you know, not an overly exciting topic, but a very important topic, which is how to care for your products. This is especially important this time of year as you're transitioning your closet from spring, summer to fall, winter. Um, we talked a little bit about these tips and tricks during our closet edit promo um, webinar, but this is a really great opportunity to kind of refresh reinvent your wardrobe, and then also make sure you're caring for everything properly. If you care for your garments, they will last you a lifetime. The quality of goods that we carry here at Hangar 9 are meant to last the test of time. They're meant to be passed down to daughters, granddaughters, friends, family, um, and, but proper cleaning and storage is necessary in order for you to have the longevity that you need out of the garments. We like to think of everything as cost per wear, and the best way to utilize this is through caring for your garment. The other important thing to note is that clothing, um, the greatest environmental impact that it has is actually through the care cycle of the garment, not through the manufacturing, the dyeing, the processing, or uh, the weaving of the garment, but actually how we care for it. It uses a tremendous amount of energy, water, and also the toxins in our detergent um, are harmful for the environment. So we're gonna talk about a few of our favorite care products, but also some tips and tricks for caring for your products at home and hopefully reducing the need to dry clean. Um, so one of the simplest ways to impact the care, um, impact of care is to machine wash clothes in cold water using non-petroleum eco-friendly soaps. Um, and instead of sending sweaters to the dry cleaner, wash them uh, using the instructions that we're going to go over tonight. Uh, another thing I want to focus on is denim. So denim, um, you know, I think this is the, the season of denim that we're entering, which is um, fall. I always this is the time of year for some reason that I always invest in a new pair of jeans. September to me um, and October are really great denim months. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about caring for denim. Uh, and then we'll also talk about the different synthetic fabrics and some of the key fabrics that you guys will find in your closet and how to care for them uh, through hand wash. So starting with denim, um, if you have raw dark denim, the number one concern that most people have is dye transfer, fading through wash. Um, so one of the tips and tricks for that is actually to soak brand new jeans or jeans that are transferring their dye in vinegar. So if you just add a quarter of a cup of vinegar to a basin of water, let them soak before you wash them, the vinegar helps to set the dye um, and then wash them inside out separately. It's really important to wash any raw or dark, dark denim inside out because the rubbing uh, in the machine is what actually causes them to fade and lose their luster or to get additional whispers, which a lot of people don't love. Um, so cold water for dark denim or any raw denim um, and that will help to set the dye and then you can pre-soak in the vinegar to add the longevity and you can also do that um, it's not just a one-time thing you can do that several times to help keep the, de the deep color it's also good with black denim um, and any sort of garments that transfer dyes, uh, you'll find sometimes you'll see the dye underneath your nails. It'll kind of dye your hand, your fingers as you touch them. Uh, that can all be set with vinegar. Um, so one of our favorite products at Hangar 9 is this from Laundress, all eco-friendly, petroleum-free, phosphate-free. Um, no animal byproducts are used uh, in this as well, um, is the denim wash. So it's a mild detergent. It's really great. You can add it to your machine. You can hand wash. Uh, when washing white denim, you should select hot water. So hot is only best when used with white. So unfortunately, it's not the best for energy use, but white denim, white shirts, anything white will wash best in hot water. So add one capful of um, another product I talked about is the all-purpose bleach alternative from Laundress. We have it on back order right now. It should arrive in about two weeks, but it's a really amazing product. I even use it to clean my oven. You can cl uh, clean your floors, your walls, anything with it. It's an all-purpose product. So if you just add one capful of that to a basin of hot water, let it sit for maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then wash it in the machine or hand wash with the denim wash, your jeans will come out beautiful. And the nice thing about using the denim wash as opposed to a regular detergent is that it 
gives you that really great soft feeling that you would typically get from putting your denim in the dryer. Uh, but because we want to avoid dryer use, we want to line dry or uh, lie flat to dry as much as possible. The denim wash gives you that really soft kind of worn feeling that typically you use with what you lose with washing um, and can't really get it back unless you put them in the dryer. This will help you with that. Another really great tip too um, for, for denim in particular um, is to steam. This actually goes for any garment. So if you want to avoid having to dry clean your pieces in between washes, or if you wore something once and it's really not soiled, you don't really need to wash it, just go over it with the steamer. It, it has antibacterial properties. It'll kill any of the bacteria. That's actually something we're doing in store with everything that's being tried on during COVID is it all goes through a deep steam um, because it helps to refresh, kills any bacteria, any virus, any uh, germs, and will help to kind of give you this new fresh feeling without having to wash it. So that's kind of my tips for denim. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the chat box at the bottom and I'm happy to answer them um, as we go along. Um, and so next thing we're gonna talk about is blended fabrics. So our rule of thumb for washing a blend is to follow the instructions of the fabric with the highest percentage. So for example, if the label indicates that the shirt blend is 70% cotton and 30% acetate, follow the washing instructions for cotton. So it's super simple. It's just whatever is the majority of the fabric. Um, and I'm gonna go through each kind of individual fabrication, um, the most common ones anyways, because you're gonna find, if you look at the care label of 90% of your clothing, it's gonna say dry clean only. And that's because the manufacturer just really can't take the risk of telling you how to wash the garment and then you doing it and it not turning out. And unfortunately, these things aren't a perfect science, although based on science. Um, so it's important that you just kind of you know, proceed with caution and always test if you're unsure. Um, so another great little tip about vinegar, uh, which is one of my secret ingredients for just about everything to do with cleaning in general, um, is vinegar. So if something has a scent to it, a smell, whether it's body odor or um, you were in a room that had a strong scent and it kind of stuck to the clothing, uh, which happens often with synthetics, just soak it in a little bit of vinegar and it'll kill the smell right away if steaming doesn't work. So just get some tempered water, a quarter of a cup of vinegar, and you're good to go. So really exciting that we're entering sweater weather, one of my favorites, but I want to show you an example of what happens to a sweater when you don't launder it properly. It can become misshaped, just completely distorted. So it's super important that you wash all your sweaters with care. They don't need to be dry cleaned. I highly recommend actually not dry cleaning most wools, um, angoras or any of that because it will lose its luster. It'll lose its great, it'll damage the fiber. It'll press it. It's much better if you wash it. Um, and it's super, super simple. So read the care label always. Um, and you'll find that in most cases, merino, cashmere, alpaca, mohair can be washed and it's super easy. So you can fill a basin with just some cool water, add our wool and cashmere shampoo, which has a slight cedar scent, which helps with moss or any pests. Place the sweater in, gently swirl it around, let it soak for let's say 30 minutes. With this, you will have to rinse. Um, it can also be used in your machine if you have a high quality end machine that has a gentle cycle. Um, you can also use this soap there as well. Um, I would just with knit, I would recommend against the spin cycle because uh, we just don't want that ringing, twisting of our knits, um, especially delicate bind or any hand knits. So drain the basin, gently press the sweater uh, to remove the excess water, being careful not to twist or wring because that's gonna lose the shape. Um, and so then I would spread the sweater out on a thick dry towel and then roll the towel as you would a yoga mat. So same kind of just put it down, roll with the, tire, with the towel to get the excess water out and there's live fat to dry, unroll, leave it for 24 hours, flip it over, let it dry another 12 hours so it's nice and flat. If you need to get the shape uh, back into it, you can just um, 
give it a quick steam or I, I wouldn't iron because iron can actually melt the fiber. So just giving it a quick steam to freshen it up and it should be good to, good to wear. But this is an amazing product from Laundress. It's a must have. If you have any Marie St. Pierre, the double knit, although it does not have any wool or cashmere in the fiber, it's, it's non-wool, um, it washes up beautifully with this shampoo. And note that it's a shampoo, not a soap. So it's meant to condition and clean, not to actually strip the fiber. So it's super delicate. Everything comes out beautiful. It's a number one must have product. Another one of my favorite sweater tools is the sweater stone. So it's kind of a misconception that sweaters shouldn't pill. In fact, good quality sweaters will pill. Um, but it's not a bad thing. So when the knit is knitted or woven, um, it essentially will go through a shedding process. So the first couple wears, your sweater will shed all the excess fibers that kind of just got stuck uh, when it was in the process of being uh, woven or knitted or whatever the process. Um, and then it'll eventually deplete over time. So it'll eventually stop shedding, but it will happen the first couple wears. Um, and so one of the number one things that we recommend is a sweater stone. It's a really awesome, it's like a brick. You can see it here. Um, it comes with this easy to hold kind of thing in its own case. I'll just use this sweater as an example again. But the great thing about this is unlike a razor or um, those machines, those electric depilling machines, it actually just gently grabs and pulls away the excess fibers. It doesn't cut them or, um, you know, cause any additional ones to come up. It just simply takes away the bulk that needs to come off. And it's super easy to use. All you do is just with kind of a hand wicking motion, just kind of go through the net like so. And you'll see it takes off just the excess without any additional. And you can use this on anything, anything that pills. It again, doesn't just have to be cashmere silk. I use this on my felt couch. I've used this on Marie St. Pierre's scuba fabrication um, because it will pill if it has rubbing under the arm or where your handbag was. And you just gently kind of in an upward brush motion, go like this and it'll just take off what it needs to without causing any additional pilling. So it's a really amazing product. It's not expensive, it's $27.99, and this has lasted us probably three years. So it's not something you need to invest in all the time, but it's an awesome must have. And eventually you'll see it just kind of decays almost like a magic eraser as you use it. And then when it gets down, you just throw it out and buy a new one. But it's an awesome, awesome kind of secret trick for any of your sweaters to depill. But you'll find that if you use the wool and cashmere wash, you'll find that the fibers are much tighter. They're nicely conditioned so they don't kind of fray. You have to remember, wool and cashmere is like hair. So if, you, if it's too dry, it'll frizz, it'll break, it'll crack. Um, so if you condition it and look after it, it'll actually appear more lusterious. It'll have, uh, it also releases something called lanolin, which is an oil, a natural oil that uh, comes out in the fiber that actually helps to give it a nice kind of smooth sheen and gives that that really soft and cozy feeling. Like if you could have seen what this sweater looked like originally, it was this beautiful hand knit cashmere, but now it's this very stiff, very wiry fabrication just because it wasn't washed properly. So these are all kind of tips and tricks to maintain the integrity of the fiber. Um, next kind of really great thing is how to reduce dry cleaning. Dry cleaning is not only is it terrible for the environment, but also we don't know a lot about the chemicals that are being used. They could be carcinogens. A lot of them are very harmful. If you have sensitive skin, eczema, rosacea, they'll just kind of aggravate it. Um, and they can cause dye transfer. There's all sorts of terrible things. So if you are gonna dry clean, I recommend using a green dry cleaner. Um, but there's lots of ways to care for your products with avoiding dry cleaning. Um, not everything can be avoided, but most things can. Um, 
So most people send their stuff to the dry cleaners because it's wrinkled um, or they no longer smell fresh, not so much that it's actually soiled. So for that, you can use the vinegar trick, but I highly recommend a steamer. If you don't have a good steamer, you can even invest in a really simple uh, handheld version off of Amazon. That's really inexpensive. You can travel with it and it'll just add so much flexibility and the integrity of your garments will be maintained through proper cleaning and, and um, now, if you are wearing a lot of body perfumes or oils, that's a little bit different. Then I recommend dry cleaning, especially for silks, uh, just because they can over time discolor the fabrication or will just create kind of a smell and can over time almost disintegrate the fabrication. So it's always best to put your creams on at night and then in the morning when you put your garments on, they won't, they'll be absorbed and you won't need to do it. And with perfume, always put your perfume on before you put your garment on. Don't spray the perfume over top of your garment because the alcohol, especially if it's wool um, or silk or any natural fiber that breathes, it will actually stick and clog, I guess, the pores of the fabric. Um, so that's kind of an easy little trick to avoid having to dry clean because of that. Um, and also it's a big money saver. It's a huge, money pit to dry clean all the time. It's very expensive. It's only getting more expensive. Um, and then you reduce your impact on the environment, which is the number one thing. So delicate synthetics are synthetic fibers that are made to look and perform like silk. So they're not silk, but they're meant to look and feel like silk. Other fabrics we consider to be delicate synthetics are acetate, rayon, lycra, lyocell, model, spandex, and any acrylic, which is typically used uh, to create the look and feel of wool without actually being wool. So a man-made fiber um, from cellulose is acetate. Um, acetate yarn or thread has a silk-like appearance. Um, it resists wrinkles and fading, so is used quite often and ready to wear, and it's low cost. Um, you'll often find acetate as the dress lining or the coat linings of blouses or lingerie, um, but also shoe linings can also be made of acetate. Um, so hand washing is always the best and safest method for uh, washing acetate. For any of these kind of delicate synthetics, we recommend Euclid. Euclid is a really amazing product. Not only is it all natural, but it's also no rinse, uh, which is if you hand wash things is the most annoying part about hand washing anything is the rinse part, but it also reduces any watermarks, water stains or anything like this, which would be your number one concern when washing silk or acetate would be a water stain. Um, so this kind of completely eliminates that. It comes in three scents, uh, natural eucalyptus and lavender. The lavender will also help with any pests uh, so moss, anything that kind of mites, dust mites that kind of can get into your fibers and cause damage to them, this kind of will repel them, which is also really, really great. So for washing acetate, this is the number one product, Eucalyn. Um, acrylic is a synthetic fiber or yarn made from acrylic resins. Um, easy to wash, dries click quickly, uh, retains pleats and resists wrinkles, moths, and mildew. So it's very often used for sweaters and hosiery, uh, as well as a lot of home furnishings. Lyocell, also known as Tencel. Um, Lyocell is made from cellulose or wood pulp. Uh, it's noted for its durability, sustainability, absorption, draping, and wrinkle resistant, but it's also uh, susceptible to mildew. So you have to make sure that your garments are very, very dry before you put them into storage or you fold them up because it will cause mildew. Uh, rayon is another popular one. It's a semi-synthetic fabric made primarily from wood pulp. Um, and these ones, I'm mentioning them because they're all becoming more and more popular because of their sustainability uh, qualities. The fact that they're typically made from more uh, natural resources such as wood pulp, um, they're becoming a little bit more popular. Sustainability becomes a real trend in the fashion industry. Um, so, Rayon is soft, luxurious, and absorbent. Uh, it's resistant to abrasion and static, which is also really great. Um, and though it tends to yellow and pill, um, it's still washable. The only thing that is not washable, and this would be a major note to take, is if you have a viscose rayon. Viscose rayon, under no circumstances, can be washed. It must be dry cleaned. Um, so that's just a number one thing to keep in mind. So if it's exclusively rayon, exclusively viscose, you can wash, but if it's viscose rayon, absolutely cannot be washed. 
So viscose is a semi-synthetic fiber made of regenerated cellulose. Uh, it's highly uh, lustrous, very absorbent. It dyes beautifully, so it's very popular. Um, there's no static buildup. It does have a poor resilience and weakens when wet, so something to be cautious of because it can shrink and it is prone to mildew. So it's very important that you make sure before you store anything that it's completely 100% dry before you store it or put it back in your closet. Um, and I find too, if you have your laundry down in your basement, this can be hard because it's typically colder in your basement. So garments can feel wet longer. So just keep them up on a hanger or keep them on a dry towel and maybe just put them in your bedroom or on a second floor or up higher if you're unsure if they're 100% dry. Um, but don't assume that they are because these can cause mildew. Um, but all of these can be used with Euclid. Amazing product. Another product I want to just briefly mention is the stain solution. So if you have any old stains, new stains, um, discoloration under the arm caused by deodorant, uh, this is an awesome product. You can use it dry or wet. Um, I'm living with this right now because I have two young kids at home and I don't always do the laundry. So sometimes things get washed before I have a chance to go over them with a stain stick. So this I is a miracle stuff because you can use it on stuff that has already set. Um, can confirm it works on red wine and on chocolate uh, because I did dealt with that this week. So it's a really great product as well. We have the travel ones available for sale now and we'll have the larger bottles available also. And you can use it either directly in your machine, right on the garment directly. It's a miracle product. So this is a number one must have also, and it's the stain solution. So a few little tips and tricks before we conclude for storing your items for the season um, is always store them clean, which is super important. Um, if you don't store your items clean, you're prone to get uh, staining, mildew, dust mites, uh, moths, all are attracted to kind of our body odors, our dead skin cells, all of that. So it's super important that you clean your garments before you store them. I would also recommend storing your garments in a cloth bag or a pillowcase or anything that breathes. Uh, I highly discourage anyone storing anything really in plastic because it doesn't breathe. So it's just a breeding ground for dust mites and moths. Um, and you'll find that you'll take them out and they'll have a musty smell with them. When you're storing, especially your knits, but anything really, it's always really great to throw in some lavender. You can either use fresh lavender or you can just create a lavender spray by using distilled water with a little bit of lavender essential oils in it and just spraying either the garments themselves or the bags um, down. But again, make sure that they're dry before you put them into storage. Uh, they'll just, it'll repel moss, but it'll also just keep a fresh scent so that when you take them out of storage at the end of the season, they don't kind of have that musty smell to them. Um, and then you know, keep, just keep in mind that all techniques are based on textile science, but not all garments perform and react as science would have intended. Uh, so if you're unsure, just always just do a little quick spot test on anything um, and they'll, you'll know right away uh, whether or not um, the product will work. But I've washed using all of these on all of my things. I'm a big hand washer. I barely dry clean anything. Um, so I can truthfully tell you that they all really work. So just to kind of recap, some of our favorites is the wool and cashmere wash, which this is a must going into fall and winter. Our sweater stone, another awesome, even just household tool. Our denim wash, which is great for all of our denim. Euclid, which I travel with this actually because it's even just awesome. And there is a travel size as well available to just keep it in your luggage. And then when you're traveling, you can just wash all your undergarments or any like underpinnings in the sink of the hotel room. Just let them soak, hang them up to dry. They're good to go. No rinse necessary. And then the stain solution is another amazing product. So these are all from Laundress. They will be available um, to purchase in either in-store or through social media immediately. But in the coming weeks, we will have them available on our e-commerce platform, which we'll be launching uh, and making further announcements shortly, which we're super excited about. Um, but all of these are really great products. They'll 
help you keep your clothes looking fresh, clean, and beautiful and lasting you a lifetime. So if there's any questions, I'll just answer them quickly. But I don't think there are. So thank you again so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. And we hope to see you again soon in store or online during one of our webinars. We'll have another one uh, the first Wednesday of every month. So the next one will be in September where we'll be talking about lots of great fall fashions. Um, and thank you so much for your continued support. And we hope you all stay well and healthy during this strange and bizarre time. But we can't wait to see you again soon. Bye.